How could someone get inside that cramped wheel well on a jumbo jet? ABC's Ryan Owens went to the airplane graveyard in the Mojave Desert and shows and tell us how it could be possible. Walking under the belly of a 767, you really, first of all, get an idea how massive this plane is, and second, how difficult something like this would be to pull off. Why? Well, just take a look at the wheels. The mechanics here tell us each one of these things weighs several hundred pounds. There are four of them here. The landing gear, all of this together, several thousand pounds, a couple of tons. So yes, it's possible to climb up something like this, but then what? How do you survive when this retracts into the belly of the plane? We're told this young man at the airport in San Jose climbed the gear with no protection. Remember, he didn't have on gloves, anything like that. Look at my hands after I've just been climbing on this old 767 for a little while. And then at the airport in Hawaii, the witnesses say he didn't have any grease or any dirt on him. It seems almost impossible. While it's certainly possible to climb these gears, the question is, once you get up here, where would you put a body, even a small teenage body? Let me explain something to you. This white door right here, this drops after takeoff so that these huge wheels can retract into the belly of the plane. There is no room inside there for much of anything other than these wheels. Wow. Our thanks to Ryan Owens. We're going to bring in ABC News aviation consultant John Nance right now. And people have just watched Ryan Owens right there up close and personal. And we heard David Curley just moments ago saying 24 hours later, many still scratching their heads. You've had some time to sit with this now. What are your thoughts this morning? Well, I'm still astounded, not only that uh, the story uh, is out there, and I guess he may have done what he said he did. I'm still a little bit skeptical, but the, the main thing is I'm astounded that people can get into a hibernated state, Robin. That's something that I don't think any of us understood. We're always taught as commercial airline pilots about rapid depressurization, and we know you can't last up there for more than just a few seconds, but to have something like this go on for five hours is just absolutely mind-boggling. It really is, and uh, you're not totally convinced. A lot of people are not totally convinced convinced that he stowed away there. Is there somewhere else in the plane where he could have hidden? He could have hidden, I suppose, in a baggage compartment. Uh, he could have even gotten in what we call the E&E &E compartment, although that would be problematic because he would have had to know how to open the door, etc. Uh, probably the baggage compartment would be my Canada, but even there, you have big uh, modules, if you will, in which the bags are put on, not a free-sitting uh, type of baggage compartment where people are throwing bags around and you could hide, so I'm not even sure that's possible. So going forward, what, what do we need to address here? What are the main issues we need to address here? Yeah. Well, the main issue is that the security has not been what we should uh, have expected. In other words, not just the security at San Jose, but across the country. We've got to look at the ability to get over a fence. That, that mustn't be allowed to happen. And we've done such a good job in many respects of all the other aspects of security, but the perimeter fences are an obviously weak link. I think that's the biggest lesson out of this. A huge, huge red flag, to say the least. All right, John yeah. Nance, thanks very much.